I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time now uh, regarding this journalist, Oliver Holt. Uh, now, ever since the takeover, this man has been seriously bitter towards Newcastle United. But I will state, not just the club, the fans and the players have also, you know, got it in the neck from this guy. And sometimes he doesn't even refer to us as fans. It's just they or them. You know, so I'll put the tweets up in a minute. We'll go through some of the ones that I've picked out um, since the takeover and how bitter and nasty he's been towards our football club. Very hypocritical, in my opinion, as well. Other sporting events that have taken part in Saudi Arabia, he hasn't gone on like this uh, with, with certainly the boxing or the wrestling or anything else like that. Um, so it, it's very hypocritical for me. I'm not saying anything uh, derogatory that's not true. The facts are out there. He's actually put these in tweets. You know, everybody has seen them. So I just wanted to run through them and I've been sort of preparing the video for a while to look through what he's trying to say or what he's trying to get at um, but the Tonali thing when he talked about the open bus parade that was a final straw for me and a lot of other fans who responded to that tweet but it's not the way you know some people may say oh don't bite don't bite just let him get on with it but no uh, you've got to defend your football club at the end of the day and that's what I'm doing today because I just think it's absolutely disgraceful that his employers allow him to tweet such nonsense an absolute hatred towards a football club and let him get away with it without anybody pulling him up on it. It's it's wrong and it's got to stop. But, you know, it won't because his employers are quite happy for him just to continue his, his tirade against Newcastle. And that's what exactly what it is. Um, now, the first few tweets are from around the time of the takeover and, the, and, and a couple of months into the takeover. Um, one I've picked out first is, what is next, I wonder? Uh, at what point do people who love Newcastle object to the cynical way the club are being used? Uh, a rebrand of St. James's Park to maybe MBS Park, changing the home kit to green and white stripes. How far would the Saudis have to go before their money is no longer worth it? I mean, uh, oh, it's obvious what he's trying to say there. You know, it, it, the club has been used. Of course, this sports washing comes up again. Um, now, I don't believe in this. Uh, you know, this is one thing that I don't believe. Um is the sports washing aspect of it. I think, you know, PIF have bought Newcastle United because they want to have a successful football club in the Premier League. It's as simple as that in my eyes. And the, the way that Amanda, me and dad, and, uh, you know, uh, Jamie Rubin, the three of them are spearheading over here. Yes, we have the chairman, of course, who's been across a few times, but the main three are, are, are those three who are spearheading Newcastle United, who are running the football club and running it brilliantly since they've come through the door. Nobody can deny that. And they're wanting success. They've spent a fortune already on this football club and they will spend another fortune on it in years to come. They want success. This has nothing to do with sports washing. Now, for me, do I agree with some of the laws in Saudi Arabia? Of course not. But that's not to say I don't agree with some laws in other countries as well. It's just the fact that Saudi Arabia is, is you know been very much highlighted for, for human rights issues. But let the politicians deal with that. I've said all along, since the takeover, football and politics shouldn't mix. I know they do at times, but they shouldn't mix. And just let the politicians get on with sorting human rights out. But the two countries can learn from each other, hopefully. That's that's the kind of bonus of the clubs being to you know, the club being expanded into the Middle East like that. Hopefully you know, we can learn different cultures from each other. But, you know, people are too quick to, to stamp down and, and bring up this sports washing and all of this garbage. Um, and for me, this is just perfect for the likes of this nasty man, Oliver Holt, to, to, to have a real dig at Newcastle United. And he, he continues his, uh, his tirade, uh, shall we say. Um, th this one got me as well. He says, the idea that they have got their club back. So again, as I mentioned at the start, he's talking about us as fans as they or them. He doesn't say the Newcastle United fans feel like they have their club back. He doesn't mention that at all. It's all about they, which is disrespectful already to Newcastle United fans, referring to us as they. You know, we, we again, just he thinks he's levels above us, guys. That, that That's just where the man thinks he is. Uh, but he says the idea that they've got the club back after the Saudis bought it from the Lord Mike Ashley is also looking more and more delusional uh, with every day. So again, calling us delusional. Uh, the truth is they are further and further away from getting their club back. Who knows what uh, part of the club's history and culture the owners will appropriate next. Newcastle as a vassal state is a sad sight to see. 
What is this man talking about? Seriously. I mean, look, th th these tweets are obviously not long after the takeover. Uh, but yes, we do feel like we have our club back because I'll tell you something, Oliver Holt, we have got our club back. The communication between club and fans has been brilliant since these guys take, took over. You know, you see Amanda and me and dad meeting fans all the time, going to the women's games and things like that. But you just want to see all the negatives about it. As, as soon as sort of the Saudis are mentioned, it's bang. Negativity straight away from you, Holt. And it's pathetic. It's, it's, it's pathetic. It's trash talk. It's garbage journalism from somebody who was employed by one of the big media outlets yet gets away with putting crap like that. It, it, it's ridiculous. It, it's absolutely horrible to read. And again, calling the fans delusional. Why are we delusional when we've got our bloody football club back? You pathetic little rat. Seriously. Don't call us delusional. We know what we've been through under Mike Ashley. And now we've got our club back. The communication is there. Yes, still a lot is to be done. Ticket and etc. That is all to be worked out. And I'm sure they will work on that as a matter of priority. However, do we feel like we've got our club back? 110% we do. And for you to try and say that we, we're, we're delusional because we feel like we've got our club back, give over, man, will you? Honestly, just trash. Absolute trash. Uh, let's have another look at another one now. Um, again, from around the takeover. Glorying in the riches now at their disposal, many Newcastle supporters have been fiercely loyal to the Saudis. Uh, since they bought 80% of the club last October, and some have waved away their appalling human rights record, their rep the repression of minorities, uh, their penchant for mass executions, their treatment of women, and their targeting of civilians in the war in Yemen. Now, please, somebody out there, tell me what on earth that has to do with Newcastle United fans or Newcastle United Football Club. PIF bought 80%. Right, The three running it took the other 20%, and they are running the club on a daily basis and running it fantastically well, may I say. You know, this is absolute bollocks. It's trash from a little rat journalist who just wants to have a dig at Newcastle United and their fans on a consistent basis. You know, I mean, fiercely loyal to the Saudis saying we're fiercely loyal to their, their, their human rights record. Now, I brought that up just before. We have nothing to do with their human rights record, right? That is for politicians, etc. Do we agree with them? No. But it's nothing to do with our football club. The fact that the Saudis, you know, PIF are, you know, have bought 80%, that is totally separate from the human rights record or whatever's going on in Saudi Arabia. Targeting women and civilians, the treatment of women. They've just made our women's team professional. They've turned the, the women's team around. Look at where they are this season. They've given the ladies an opportunity to live their dream and be professional footballers. So don't come with a treatment of women bollocks. And you speak to a lot of Saudi citizens who will come out and say that it is improving on a daily basis with the situation with women in Saudi Arabia. But it's nothing to do with me. They are the politicians that should be dealing with that. But again, I'll reiterate, maybe the fact that, you know, Saudi are involved in Newcastle United, they can learn from other countries like us and how to respect the women and things like that, which they're already starting to do if you speak to people that live there. But this guy, he's just got his, his, his Saudi hat on, his Saudi negative hat on. He hates the Saudis. He hates anything to do with Newcastle United Football Club. And again, targets the fans by saying that we just overlook all the stuff that he's just mentioned in that tweet. It's disgusting. How dare he even mention that? And again, he keeps going because he doesn't get reprimanded by the people that are above him. And it, it's shocking. It really is glorifying the riches. I mean, this man is absolutely pathetic. He is. Anyway, uh, another one again uh, around a similar time. Uh, Newcastle will play in Saudi colours next season, uh, allying them even more closely with a, dip, a despotic regime. Uh, so, beyond losing their identity, how much more are fans prepared to sacrifice? Green and white stripes for a home kit, MBS Park, uh, mail on Sunday, column later. Yeah, written in absolute bollocks in your mail on Sunday column, which is absolute trash. And I'll say it now. 
You're just a you're just a horrible little man who's got a little vendetta against Newcastle United and their owners. You cannot see the positives. It's all negatives, and it, he's not the only one. Don't get me wrong. Oliver Holt's not the only one. There's a few of them out there, but this man has continued his his his, his hunt to to get Newcastle United uh, as a club hated around the UK because of what he's putting out on tweets. It's basically a witch hunt. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's just pathetic, isn't he? Beyond losing their identity. Newcastle have gained their identity. They've got their identity back. They've not lost anything. We lost our identity under Mike Ashley. But Oliver Holt can't see that. We were 15 years in the doldrums under that absolute bell end, right? But now... We have got our identity back. We know where we're going. We've got ambition back. We've got positivity back around the football club. And it's a wonderful place to go and watch football. You've got owners who actually speak out and speak to the fans and get involved in everything, who want to make sure that the fans come first in a football club. You didn't have that under the previous regime. So how on earth we haven't got our identity back, I have no idea. What a pillock, honestly. Anyway, some of the tweets, uh, some of the later tweets, or sorry, recent tweets, I should say. Um, this one here, um, this was against uh, PSG. Uh, so we're looking at the very recent past here. Uh, great result for Newcastle tonight. Hard not to be pleased for supporters on a night like this. Yeah, okay, Oliver, you've done nothing but slag the supporters off for nearly two years. So don't come like that. But then he's got to ruin it by saying... But let's not pretend there was any romance about it. Uh, one repressive state beat another repressive state. See how he's always got to get his little comments in, his little niggles. Uh, you know, th th of course there was romance about it. Newcastle haven't been in the Champions League for 20 years and their first home game in that competition, they wallop uh, a giant like Paris Saint-Germain 4-1. Absolutely destroyed them. So how on earth is that not romance? You little scrotum. Honestly, read your tweets back, Oliver Holt, because you must be embarrassed. Seriously embarrassed to read that crap you're putting out there. How is that not romance? 20 years out of the Champions League, look at the atmosphere at the game. The flags, the, the, the noise in the stadium was incredible. And you still come out and say there was no romance about it. I, I just... I don't get it. I truly, truly don't get it. I don't get your hatred at all. Um, then he says, uh, decent game at St. James's Park, but one expects a little more from the self-proclaimed richest club in the world. Self-proclaimed. Um, is it not a fact that we have the richest owners in the world? I believe it is. So what are you talking about again? You muppet. Seriously, what are you talking about? Again, self-proclaimed richest club in the world. Is that a dig at the club or is it a dig at the fans? Because we suddenly have a bit of money to spend and we know we do. Yes, obviously FFP has caused a big, big problem in us buying any players uh, or spending a lot of money. But my God, look at what the club's done. Look at the players we've brought in for not necessarily billions of pounds. Look at what Eddie Howe has done. Try and focus on that, Oliver, the football side of it, you know, like you're supposed to. But no, it's it's all about trying to get at us and self-proclaimed. I mean, who's? I don't think it's self-proclaimed, to be honest, Oliver Holt. I think it's actually fact if you go and do your checkups, which you don't, because you're, you're just a, a despicable little human being. A um, couple more that I just want to highlight. Uh, this one here. Uh, it's a progressive step if, as reported in some quarters, Sandro Tonali will be allowed to train with Newcastle during his ban. Now, again, he started off with a little bit of saying, yep, yeah, it's it's a progressive step because obviously these players, you know, rather than ban them for a long period of time, keep them involved in the club. But then he says it's a shame that Ivan Tony was not granted the same concessions. Now, we know that Ivan Tony, uh, obviously under the FA, it was the Italian FA who've come out with Tonali's ban, but he doesn't state that. He doesn't go into detail. He just wants to know that he'll have a little dig back saying, well, if Newcastle can get away with that, Ivan Tony should have. Completely different uh, situation with Ivan Tony as it was to Sandro Tonali. Completely different. But again, the Tonali tirade went on. And this is the, this is the tweet, I think, that really 
really pissed a lot of Newcastle United fans off. Uh, on a brighter note, anyone know where the open top bus parade is for Tonali? Or when does the open top bus parade start for Tonali? How sick must you be in the head, Oliver Holt? How sick? This is a man who, you know, we found out now has an addiction, which is an illness. And you ask all the footballers who've had situations like this, it's a terrible, terrible illness. It's an addiction. And you come out with a tweet like that against a professional footballer who has an addiction. Did you ever come out and say that about Tony Adams, Paul Merson, Keith Gillespie? I don't recall you did. But because obviously now Newcastle United are owned by PIF and the Saudis, you think it's okay to put a tweet out like that. You are sick in the head. You are supposed to be a media journalist, a sports journalist, writing for one of the biggest media outlets, right? Yet you come out with a disgusting thing like that. I'll bet you bottom dollar now that a lot of people, if they wrote that tweet, who were in a high position, they would be in a lot of trouble and asked to remove that. But yours is still on there. And you're having a little dig at somebody who has an addiction. In fact, it's not a little dig, it's a massive dig. And again, making fun of the Newcastle fans, I presume, because of the applause they gave him uh, when Newcastle did their lap of honour against, uh, I think it was Palace. It might not have been Palace, it might have been before that, but where he was pushed to the front and he was applauded by the Newcastle fans. You obviously have taken an objection to that, as you always do. Um, you're an absolute idiot. Uh, and I've got no good things to say about you, Oliver Holt. Um, and I don't think many Newcastle United fans have because you've been on a tirade against this football club since the takeover. And it, it is actually bordering on pathetic now. Um, you are just a disgrace to journalism, in my opinion. You're a disgrace to football as well because you have you just can't see any positives. You have to have a go to fan base who've been through, well, what I can only describe as absolute shite for 15 years under Mike Ashley. Yet you think that we haven't got our identity back as a club? That you think we are delusional? You think that we should have a bus top parade for Tonali, who is, well, pretty poorly with a gambling addiction. Shocking. Shocking. And you don't deserve to be in the position you are. You don't deserve to be able to put rubbish out like that, especially on social media, where we know there is so many people who want to hurt people who want to have a go at them, who affect their mental health in many, many different ways. Trolling that is beyond a joke. But you put that out there as a professional journalist. You are a pathetic little man and shouldn't be anywhere near the job you're in. It's, it's hideous. But it, it won't stop because you just have this, this inside hatred now for Newcastle United because of uh, the Saudi links and everything like that. You, you hate it. But you know what? You can go on hating. I wanted to do this video to highlight some of the absolute horrors that you've put out on social media and calling out Newcastle fans, the, the football club as well. You, you know, Now, we move forward and we just look forward to a brighter future. Uh, you can put what you want, Oliver Holt. Quite frankly, just just disappear for me. Just You're a rubbish journalist. You're a terrible journalist. You're a hypocritical journalist. And you're a nasty journalist. End of story. You are just a monstrosity of a human to be putting things like that out on social media as a journalist. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think about this journalist. Uh, and uh, do you agree with what I've said or do you have a bit of sympathy for Oliver Holt? Is he right in some of the stuff he's put? Because I can't see it at all. Now then, we know that Newcastle United are simply desperate for a striker at the moment. Uh, we know the situation with Isak out until after the next international break. Callum Wilson just simply can't play two games a week. Uh, and I would hate to think that we put that kind of stress on him. Um, because if we lost him as well, we, we simply have no striker, uh, which, is, which is a massive problem. And a lot of people are saying, yeah, but we've got Anthony Gordon to play that position. Absolutely, we have. But I'd rather that we had a specialist in that position than, than uh, you know, a makeshift one, especially the games that we've got coming up, uh, which are huge games. Uh, but we, um, you know, news came out last week that we were possibly interested in a young Brazilian kid. Um, 
And, you know, a very, very talented one as that. Uh, and we've been linked with uh, Santos centre forward, Marcos uh, Leonardo. Now, I mentioned him a couple of times on the live shows. Um, very, very, very good player. Um, this kid is, is just, well, he's one of those Brazilian superstars, I feel. Um, you know, Brazil have had a, a, a big history of, of kids coming over into Europe, especially, I think, Spain, uh, and doing wonderfully well. Um, this guy is expected to be the next big one. Um, now, he's been on Newcastle's radar for a number of months and has also gathered interest from Roma at the moment in Italy. Now, Roma, of course, uh, will be looking at players, as will all the big clubs across Europe. They'll be looking at this guy. He's not going to come cheap by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but is he something that Newcastle could benefit from? Absolutely. But he's not going to come in and want to be and, and be third striker. He's going to want to come in and hit the ground running, despite him being a young kid. Now, he was only 17 when he broke into Santos's first team um, and was the main striker during the 2022 season where he scored 13 goals in 35 appearances. He continued that into the next season, scoring 13 in 24, and he's also got 15 goals in 13 games at Brazil under-20 level, also winning the silver boot at the under-20 World Cup with five goals in five games. This guy is special. Um... As I say, he won't come cheap at all. Um, and whether this is going to be a January move or a, a summer move, I think, you know, possible it's going to be January simply because of the situation Newcastle United are in. Um, Newcastle have held informal talks with Santos. So they're trying to get ahead of the game, obviously, and see if we see what we can do regarding this player. But he is very, very exciting. Uh, and hopefully we can get the deal done. Uh, and that will sort of cover us up front for the remainder of the season. Uh, but that is it, guys. Let me know what you think of uh, the show today. Obviously, Oliver Holt, let me know in the comments what you think about him. And, of course, are you excited about uh, uh, this guy from Brazil possibly to rocking up in January? Uh, I certainly am. He looks a talent. Uh, he knows where the back of the net is. So very, very exciting time. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Please do stick the thumbs up for us. Uh, it really does help in the YouTube youtube algorithm um which will let fellow fans know about the channel and hopefully they can subscribe to in the future uh but if you have enjoyed the show and you are new please do subscribe it is free to do so and also hit that notification bell which will let you know when we schedule any of our live shows or we upload any videos such as this one if you're watching this on the wednesday join us tonight at 7 p.m where we have the sorry not 7 p.m., 8 p.m., where we have the Watch Along With Me and Billy live commentary of Manchester United versus Newcastle United in the Carabao Cup. So that's 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, it should be an absolute cracker. God knows what the team's going to be, uh, but join us for that from 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, have a brilliant rest of your day, and we'll see you for the Watch Along tonight. In the meantime, take care.